Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Newstos. So we are starting to head into that part of the year where we're going to be heading into these bigger events, you know, that E3 part of the year. And with that, there's going to be a lot of stuff that kind of makes its way online. And well, that starts today. We are starting to hear about a big Xbox game that could be making a gameplay appearance sometime here soon. And it sounds like it might be releasing sometime in 2023. And really, when you start to look at it, from this holiday onward, the Xbox Series lineup is looking pretty incredible, so we're going to go over all of that today, and then also, unfortunately, we do have yet another major delay to talk about, this time for an upcoming PlayStation console exclusive, and then even some Xbox content, so we'll go over that one as well. First, though, let's go over some of the quick news, starting off with an upcoming Xbox Game Pass game that's actually going to be releasing later this month, and that would be Shredders. Now, a couple of weeks ago, the release date did seemingly leak out for Shredders, but it has now since been confirmed, and Shredders will be making its debut this month on March 17th. So you're going to be able to play this one in just 10 days from now, and it actually does look like a pretty solid title. I think graphically, Shredders does look impressive, especially when it comes to the animations. Obviously, that's going to be pretty important for Snowboard game like that but it also seems like it has quite a bit of content going for it as well they do say that you can unlock a huge open world there's going to be a top selection of pro writers that has their real voices and stories in the game it also has diverse locations its own story mode which is always nice to see and on top of that you're also going to be able to play cooperatively with friends online so it does appear or at least on paper that shredders is going to be a pretty high quality snowboarding game which is always nice to see whether you like snowboarding or not these do tend to be pretty fun and the fact that it will be releasing directly into xbox game pass on march 17th it might be something you want to just go ahead and download and check out for yourself as always you just gotta love xbox game pass Moving on, something interesting seems to be happening with Mario Party Superstars. Nintendo, of course, did release Mario Party Superstars last year, and overall, I think that this is a much better game than Super Mario Party. Super Mario Party that released earlier this generation for the Switch is sold really well. Like, it sold like 15 million units or something like that, which I still almost feel like that was kind of a surprise for Nintendo. But the thing about that game was that it was really centered on motion controls. And for a lot of fans, they wanted Nintendo to kind of get back to the roots of the Mario Party franchise, and that's where Mario Party Superstars comes in. This is much more of your classic Mario Party experience, and in fact, it is a remake of several of the older Mario Party games. But even though this game is fun, and I can actually attest to that myself, me and my family do play this game quite a bit together, but the problem with this game is that it just lacks on content. Right out of the gate, it just launched with five boards, which just isn't enough. It's also missing several staple characters that should be in here, such as Diddy Kong, Bowser Jr. isn't playable either, and there's definitely some improvements that they can make here by just simply adding more content. And well, that might actually be happening. A new survey over on YouTube has some fans speculating that that might be the case because there has been a question or an ad that has popped up asking consumers which downloadable content would you like to see for the Nintendo Switch? And this includes Hot Wheels Unleashed, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Animal Crossing New Horizons, and then last but not at least you have Mario Party Superstars. One thing that has been pointed out about all this is that all of those games have received some type of DLC in the past, except of course, Mario Party Superstars. So that was definitely an interesting one to pop up on this list here. And maybe it could be hinting at some DLC in the future. Now, of course, though, keep in mind that all of this is just speculation for the time being. And until you hear something directly come from Nintendo, it's always important to keep that in mind. Still, though, I will say that DLC for Mario Party Superstars, it does make a lot of sense. The gameplay is definitely there, but the one part of this game that is lacking, of course, like I said before, is content. And one thing that we have seen here in recent years is that Nintendo, they are a little bit more willing to do DLC. In fact, we're seeing that right now with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. So I don't think that this would necessarily be a major surprise to get some DLC for Mario Party Superstars. Let's go to talk about Xbox though, because it is starting to look like from this holiday onward, the Xbox series lineup is starting to look 
really good. I mean, you're talking about a ton of big games releasing over the next couple of years, which we'll kind of get to here in just a moment. But this all kind of started off with Jeff Grubb over on VentureBeat talking about some of Xbox's upcoming E3 plans and maybe the possibility of one of their big games being revealed sometime here soon and then released maybe even as early as 2023. And that would be Perfect Dark. Now, if you all don't know me, I am a big fan of Rare. I grew up playing a lot of the Rare games back on the Nintendo 64 and Perfect Dark, the reboot of this game right now is one of my most anticipated games easily. I am very excited to see this franchise return and see what they do with Perfect Dark in modern day times. I mean, there is so much potential with this game and all of the different gadgets that you could use with Joanna Dark and the, the, the stealth based mechanics. I, I think you can do some really cool things with all that. So yeah, I, excited is probably a little bit of an understatement of what I feel for Perfect Dark. But this is again coming from Jeff Grubb over on VentureBeat. He was over on the Xbox Era podcast and let's check out what he had to say. Perfect Dark could come out in 2023, could easily come out in 2024, but I think we'll probably get Avowed, we'll probably get Perfect Dark. At that point, they will have had close to five years of development. So that's already a big talking point because that means that Perfect Dark might be releasing sooner than what some of us expected. It seems like there's always been that toss up on whether it would come out in 2023 or 2024. But according to Jeff Grubb, there is a possibility that it could release as early as 2023. And in fact, that also means that we're probably going to see this game rather soon. That is something else that Jeff Grubb goes over here as he talks about Xbox's E3 plans for 2022. He went on to say that they will definitely spend a lot of time on Starfield. They will probably spend a lot of time on Redfall and Forza Motorsports 8, but then they're going to have a lot of room to talk about, okay, here's where we're going to be in 2023. And the games that they talk about there are likely going to be the games that you will be getting in 2023. I expect to get gameplay of Perfect Dark and stuff like that at that point so again he's very specifically talking about perfect dark here that gameplay reveal might possibly be coming in just a few short months and i mean there's a lot of questions regarding the future of perfect dark how is the gameplay going to be it seems like one thing that they've really been focusing on is this dynamic and fluid movement system it's supposed to be quite innovative and creative in how the combat actually works that is one thing that we've continuously heard when it comes to this reboot but now we just want to kind of see it in action i also want to see if there's a big focus on stealth based gameplay like the original Perfect Dark? Is it going to be a story driven game? And then also, what about all the different gadgets? All these things will be very important for this upcoming Perfect Dark game. So, so hopefully, some of those questions will be answered sometime here soon and could possibly be at this upcoming E3 Xbox event. I think that that might actually be the bigger underlying story here, though, because if Xbox starts to reveal some of their plans for 2023, that's whenever I feel like the Xbox series as a console is going to start heating up in a major way they do have some big plans from this holiday onward i mean we're talking about this year you have redfall and then starfield but then after that i mean you have forza 8 there's perfect dark fable avowed hellblade 2 and state of decay 3 all of these games are possibly going to be releasing in 2023 or maybe even in 2024 so that's a lot of games right there but then there's also several unannounced games that we don't know about whether that be from third-party partnerships or even from their first party Party. There's been several leaks pointing towards IOI Interactive working with Xbox. There's also Stoic Games. Both of those are apparently working with Xbox. Then in terms of first party, the Coalition, the Gears of War studio, they haven't confirmed what they're working on. And supposedly they do have a second game in development, Compulsion Games. We haven't gotten a confirmation from them. We don't know when Outer Worlds 2 is coming out. We don't know about the Elder Scrolls 6. And really the list just goes on and on. Again, if you start to look at this holiday onward, it really feels like that that's when a lot of those acquisitions that Xbox has been making over the years, that's when they're going to start to pay off. So I think for you Xbox fans out there, you're going to have a lot to look forward to over the next couple of years. Unfortunately, though, we do have a couple of delays to talk about here, one being for Xbox and then the other one for the PlayStation 5. We'll go ahead and start off with Xbox first since we're already talking about them, and this would be for Halo Infinite's cooperative campaign. This has been a much anticipated release ever since, well, before Halo Infinite came out. A lot of people were disappointed that it was not going to launch side by side with the Halo Infinite campaign, and they did say that it was going to be delayed until Season 2. Unfortunately, though, it will not 
release day one for season two. It is still being planned for season two, but unfortunately will just not be there at the debut for season two. And I know that's going to be disappointing for a lot of people out there, especially those that are waiting to play the single player campaign with a friend. So for those people out there specifically, this is definitely not the news that you wanna hear, but it does sound like that they're at the very least trying to get this right. It doesn't sound like it's gonna be a major delay or anything like that because it is still gonna be released sometime during season two and they did say that it will support four player co-op and that they're looking to get this to work with local co-op as well so it does seem again like they're trying to get this right at the very least now as for season two as a whole they did say that it will launch on may 3rd and it's gonna be bringing in several new game modes new maps and a fresh battle pass the new game modes that will be included will be last spartan standing there's also land grab and king of the hill so that's all very nice and everything but i think the big inclusion here will be the the new maps which will be one for arena mode and then one for big team battles i would have actually liked to have seen more new maps here especially considering that you're really only going to get one new map for each type of playstyle, one for big team battles and then one for arena mode basically if you're playing competitive only then you're really only getting one new map here and and halo infinite doesn't really have a ton of maps right now as it is so i feel like that they could have probably used more than two maps here if they want to have fans preoccupied throughout the entire season the thing about halo infinite is in terms of gameplay it's an absolutely outstanding game but it still does need some more content such as maps as an example now hopefully they start to speed things up in future seasons once they get cooperative and forge mode out of the way that should probably free up some resources for them so then they can maybe pump out more content a little bit more frequently when it comes to halo infinite let me know what you think about all of this though do you think that 343 has done a good job overall with their content plans when it comes to halo infinite and do you think that this is enough content for season two let me know in the comments below now, as for this PlayStation game, unfortunately, Forspoken also got a pretty major delay. It was originally supposed to release on May 24th, so that's just a couple months from now. But now, Square Enix has since pushed this game back all the way to October 11th of this year. That is a pretty significant delay that could also have a little bit of a trickle effect for upcoming Square Enix games as well. We'll kind of talk about that here in just a moment. But as I really always say when it comes to these delays, I don't get upset about this type of situation at all. I mean, sure it is disappointing especially if you're looking forward to playing it sometime here soon but i would rather the game be delayed and get the problems fixed up that it's currently having than just rushing it out and then have a terrible overall first impression with fans so it's not like these developers they want to delay their game or anything like that but rather if it's needed if it is necessary then absolutely take your time and make it work this is an ambitious triple a title coming from square enix and Illumina studios which is actually the studio that worked on Final Fantasy 15. I actually like that one probably a little bit more than what some fans out there did, but I'm, I am hoping that Forspoken turns out to be a good game. I think its world, its gameplay and story overall seems to be really interesting, though at the same time, some of the trailers that they have shown in the past, it does seem like that it could use an extra little bit of polish, and that's where this delay could come in and really help out with Forspoken. Now, that is one thing that I have seen a lot of, though. There has suddenly been this concern that Forspoken will lead to a bit of a trickle effect with some upcoming Square Enix titles. Obviously, and the big one here would be Final Fantasy 16. There was some hope that maybe Final Fantasy 16 would release in late 2022, but would Square Enix really release two of their big AAA titles in close proximity of one another? That could end up having a negative effect on one or the other. Probably more than likely that'd be with Forspoken, considering it is a new IP, and a lot of people would probably just go out and buy Final Fantasy 16 instead. So there has been some speculation that because of this, maybe Final Fantasy 16 will be pushed back to 2023. Really, though, I mean, we haven't gotten a confirmation for Final Fantasy 16 in the first place, though, so we don't know if it was even planned for 2022 or not. So I guess we'll just kind of have to wait and see how all of this plays out. But what we do know is that unfortunately, Forspoken has received a pretty significant delay here, and it will now be released on October 11th. Let's go ahead and move on over to the poll of the day, though. And with that looming question right now on whether or not Xbox should do those more digital style of directs, 
I went ahead and asked you all, would you rather Xbox do one big event a year like we've been seeing in the past, such as E3, or would you like to see them start to do multiple digital direct-like events? And as you can see here, most of you all are leaning towards those digital directs. 61% of you all did vote for digital directs, where 32% of you all voted for big E3-like events. Now, I will say that based off the comments, a lot of you all would just like to see them do both of these. And okay, that's perfectly fine as well. You can still have digital directs with some of them being really big while some are not. In fact, both Sony and Nintendo are doing something like that already. So that is something that Xbox could do as well. Though it is important that when you announce these events, you have to kind of set expectations so fans don't automatically think that all these huge, huge games are just going to be announced because you know how things are on the internet. Everybody's expectation levels are always a 10 out of 10. It's going to be the best event ever. Ever, right so you do have to kind of set expectations correctly when you announce these events but overall i do think that there's a lot of good things that comes from these more frequent digital style of events i i myself i do love e3 and i'm not going to say that i don't it's amazing when you see the entire game industry just kind of come together and have big announcement after big announcement it is a lot of fun to watch but these more frequent digital style of events they do allow these publishers to be more transparent with their fan base and, and what they have planned for the near future and that is something about Xbox, and we just talked about this earlier. It does seem like from this holiday onward, they have a lot of games in development, so they could very easily start to fill these events pretty frequently, I think. And yeah, I, I think that it's probably the right move to start to move towards these digital style directs for Xbox. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode. But if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.